And we can start with the first session that is dedicated to CCA special group updates. And uh, it's my pleasure to call Chiara Bracconi uh, from Glasgow, and uh, she will give uh, us an update on the ENSCA activity. So thank you, thank you, Lorenzo and John, and thank you, Ellen, for giving us the opportunity to uh, discuss the activities of ENSCA. So for those of you who are not familiar, ENSCA is the European Network for the Study of Cholangiocarcinoma. Um, these are my disclosure. And uh, I think, uh, I mean, we do not need to discuss in this, in this uh, meeting why we set that up. We do recognize that cholangiocarcinoma um, is still an unmet need. The prognosis still can be improved, at, especially at the time when ESCA was uh, set up. It was, uh, we, we were starting to see that there was a in progressive increase in interest in other tumor types, including uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. But you see the interest in cholangiocarcinoma was not picking up at the same Stay on the same level. And so um, it was, uh, um, the, we thought it was the right moment uh, to really start and join the forces together. There were a lot of different groups working already on cholangiocarcinoma, and we thought that if we joined forces together, we could have achieved better goals. Uh, currently, ESCA is an international network, mainly focused on European countries, which includes also targeting countries with uh, lower incomes. But uh, um, it actually, uh, the borders go beyond Europe and we do have involvement of engagement from uh, groups from uh, around the world. Collaboration is at the heart of ENSC. So we, do, we did think that a multi-stakeholder interaction would have been really of benefit to make sure that we could progress from a basic translational and clinical research perspective uh, using the input of different disciplines, which uh, can go from researchers to clinicians to industry and patients representative. So this was the reason why um, there was a really big effort to start interact with different different partnerships. Uh, you can see we have uh, interaction with scientific society and uh, um, we'll see ESO probably has been so far the major society uh, behind ENSCA. Um, networks like, for example, Eurocan, um, with, whose collaboration has been more formalized uh, over the last few months, and then Patient Association and the MMF and LN have uh, really contributed greatly to the, um, all the activities that ENSCA do, is doing, uh, including also some other um, association like the CCF uh, outside Europe. So just to give you a little bit of history for those of you who are not familiar, um, I think the credit has to be given to a group of investigators who are mentioned in this consensus so that they you know, pulled together and they said that we need to put cholangiocarcinoma, even from a basic research perspective, uh, on the stage. And uh, we need to identify that there are priorities for research, uh, um, both on the basic and on clinical side, that have to be met. And uh, was then thanks to Jesus Bagnales, who formalized uh, the, the association, and he created a steering committee where I had the privilege to be part of. Uh, and in this way, we started really to uh, boost up the the interactions, which is just what we want to do. And the reason why we are here is also to really try to engage more and more people onto these um, activities. Um, as I said, ENSCA has become an ESOL consortium in 2019, and this has given a, a right boost to have a visibility through some international societies, but also gave us the possibility to formalize our constitution, which, uh, amongst other things, including that we had to re go through a renewal of steering committee so that the new ideas could be taken on board. And the, the steering committee has just changed at the end of last year. I'm now honored to be uh, the coordinator, but we do have um, other six members on the committee. Um, as you can see, uh, a few uh, representing the UK and uh, uh, trying to represent also, you know, all other European countries. And we will re-go through a um, changing of the steering committee every two years. So whoever is interested, just step forward. Uh, in terms of a game-changing situation, I think the biggest uh, step was when we uh, got some funding, uh, and thanks uh, to the activity of Vincenzo Cardinale, who uh, applied for a um, cost action, which really gave us uh, the boost to support the infrastructure. So that's something where he gave us the possibility to work uh, in a frame of working groups, uh, supporting the possibility to interact with each other, with patients and with industry and other uh, researchers. And this is where you know, we started to be a little more productive. 
adaptive. Now, as many of you know, this uh, um, Eurocolangionet grant is coming to an end, and we have worked to put in another application, and a lot of people in this room have actually contributed, and I want to thank you for that. The chair in this case has been Rocio Machas from Spain, but you can see that actually we have increased a lot in terms of uh, engagement of different institutions. We now have 43 countries which are involved with 121 institutions. So we do really hope that we can uh, you know, enhance and leverage what the activities that we have done so far. And as you can see, we are now extending to all biliary tract cancer, including also gallbladder and ampullary. So when I think about the activity of the ENSCA, I tend to think that the target, uh, the audience goes into four different big, um, uh, big areas. One is the scientific community, which also includes young investigators and early career investigators. And then we do have, you know, as a target, the patient's community de per se, or more generally, the public community. And I will give you some examples of what uh, we have been able to achieve uh, thanks to this collaboration and what we are hoping to achieve in the next few years. So the first thing we thought was important as Colangio Carcinoma community was still starting to arise at that time, we thought it was important for those who are engaging into this new field now to have a consensus so that we have a kind of a harmonized standard operating procedure for our activities. So this was the first consensus where we identified areas that we thought needed a priority in terms of effort. We did work on identification of areas for biomarker development that could have a clinical implication. And more recently, uh, we also worked on the, uh, the standardization of some criteria that have to be applied through preclinical models so that everyone who's actually um, entering the field can know what, you know, how the boxes that need to be ticked to make sure that the preclinical models are actually clinically relevant. Uh, more work is ongoing in terms of consensus statement. One is led by Tim Kendall, who is here, and uh, he has uh, been leading on a project on harmonizing the reporting of histopathological reporting of, of cholangiocarcinoma, uh, starting to focus on intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, and there is the hope that this can be moved also to the other subtypes, and that uh, this is, has involved the pathologist, but also um, end users uh, survey to make sure that what is out there is really usable and then can be applied to clinical practice. And we are also trying to uh, update a version of the consensus for research area. One of the main activities that ENSCA has been involved with is the creation of European registry. Um, we do acknowledge that cholangiocarcinoma is a rare cancer, and uh, sometimes, uh, you know, as MMF has always supported, numbers are important, and we need to pull numbers and patients together to really uh, try and see trends, which uh, might be more difficult to see otherwise. So um, we have an international uh, cohort study on cholangiocarcinoma multidisciplinary level. There is a basic clinical registry which is then leveraged to create a radiological, an histological, and a molecular registry. Now, very briefly, the clinical registry is, uh, um, um, is uh, uh, coordinated by the Bionostia group. We have already included more than 3,000 patients, and this is a great platform for everyone who wants to you know, contribute either with their, their, the information from their patients, but also if you want to if you have an hypothesis and you want to validate using real life data, this is a great platform. So you see there is a core board um, um, meeting uh, that they do evaluate different proposals. So if you have any kind of interest, just get in touch and uh, you know, we can pull out the data and, uh, um, and try to see how we can be useful. The, uh, just to give you an example of how these you know, data have been used, um, recently we have published a reference paper for the natural history of cholangiocarcinoma in Europe, which uh, obviously with the bias of some real life data, but it gives us an idea uh, which uh, can be the outcome and how they can actually be improved. And uh, we also try, and I mean, with the, especially Angela and Juan have led on these uh, Assess the which is the impact of multiple nodules in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma and how that actually changes the prognosis and can be uh, probably not well reflected in the current TNM staging. So this is currently you know, being taken for discussion with the WHO and to see if the staging system should be changed. 
these are just the slides for exemplifying how many ongoing projects are uh, currently active. Uh, and you can see uh, they are led from places uh, all around Europe. And again, this is uh, really a call to say if you want to participate, either inputting some clinical data or uh, um, extending the data set or just wanted to have some data for your analysis, these are always available. And you can see that they go from uh, surgical projects to more um, oncological projects. Uh, um, there is a component of uh, um, biosamples as well for basic research that is a little bit more preliminary in these steps. So the radiology registry is led by Marco Rengo in Italy and the, I, the, 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 the outcome and the aim would be to parallel radiomics with clinical um, outcomes. And uh, there is also an Eastern morphology registry, which is led by Guido Carpino in Rome. And in this case, uh, there is a main focus on assessing the importance of small bile duct and versus large bile duct in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. And then these, uh, you know, as they, they aim to be leveraged on with um, AI to see how, which much more information we can get from uh, histology. Um, Jasper is here and uh, is leading the uh, molecular registry where that would be really the aim of integrating clinical uh, radiological molecular information uh, and uh, this uh, um, is ongoing and again if you are any interested to participate just get in touch with him. So um, scientific publications obviously is an output. We don't consider that a ultimate output as that is just a way for disseminate our research. But I wanted to take this occasion to really share with you uh, my personal experience. And uh, you know, it's through ESC that uh, our group has been able to get in touch with a lot of other um, researchers that actually have different kind of expertise. So this is really a call to not be afraid to get in touch with other people. And this led to, um, you know, a, a manuscript that is uh, um, in uh, submission at the moment, but also it gave us the possibility to get, gather other funds. So we did get some funds from the Scottish government and we have been able to send up a more institutional multi-country application to MRC with possibility of funding even of extra um, UK centres. So there is the possibility to obviously uh, leverage our collaboration to fund. Um, we are interested in, uh, you know, disseminating our data through conferences where we usually try to keep the uh, focus on uh, discussing collaborative projects rather than just, you know, educational purposes like other conferences like MMF is quite good at. You can see from the pictures that the involvement has become greater and greater and we hope that, you know, the picture will become even larger for the 2024 and, uh, you know, we are planning where that can be. So I was saying before, we, we really like to have more visibility and to try to interact with other society. We have been lucky to have a nice engagement with EASOL. We have always um, had a um, think tank uh, session uh, on cholangiocarcinoma, which continues to go on and is going to be present this year as well. We've always had one representative on the um, organizing committee of the Liver Cancer Summit. Uh, and so that in some way has paid uh, the, 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 the way for uh, engaging the ESCA community into other society. What we would like to do in the future is engage with other societies as well. There is a discussion uh, and that is thanks to Lorenza to try and, uh, you know, embark in a more um, um, tight relationship with ILK and try to see if we can do an ILK and Skakolangio carcinoma session at their last, next meeting. I have to be honest, we tried to go with other societies, like for example ESMO, and that was a little bit more difficult. Um, but anyone who's here who's part of other societies, we are really very happy to partner. So the, um, <clears throat> the training of learning uh, career investigator is uh, very dear to us. Uh, and we have had, through the cost action, the possibility to really set up a few different uh, initiatives. The first one was training schools for uh, uh, junior investigators. And I can see a lot of phases here of people who have participated to this one. We already had three that have been uh, quite a good success on preclinical models, the clinical management, and the multiomics. And there is one that is coming up, so everyone who is interested and wants to know more about drug discovery and chemo resistance. This one will be held in um, June, uh, the first and third of June uh, in Greece. 
There is also an attention to really try and promote the career development of early uh, investigators. Uh, so um, we, we have tried to do a few different initiatives. One is uh, uh, under the umbrella of, co of uh, the Eurocolangio ne uh, Net, the short-term scientific missions where young investigators uh, have the possibility to move uh, from one institution to another and they, they receive some support in terms of funding. Uh, Pedro, who is here, uh, is leading on uh, the coordination of these uh, uh, kind of a fellowship, so just get in touch with him if you are interested. We do create educational seminars, and this is an initiative that has been done in collaboration with the International Colangio Carcinoma Research uh, Network, uh, where again uh, Pedro is uh, organizing. Um, and then we do also have had a program of mentorship where we match junior investigators with the more senior one. And you can recognize some phases that are here. So if you wanted to know more about it, just go and talk to them. Uh, I think that they, they are able to share some very uh, positive uh, uh, feedback about it. So in terms of the educational seminar series, uh, this has been on hold for a while, and now we are very keen to uh, put this in place again. So um, we are really looking for people who want to share uh, their research, uh, both from a clinical or a research perspective. And we are really very welcome to call uh, some young investigators that we usually then pair with a discussant who is more senior from the American counterpart. And this is uh, a way to really share uh, and uh, the, the, the research uh, have an educational purpose, but also uh, try to, uh, to, to increase the ability of discussing, you know, um, the, 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 the critical thinking. So we have done some initiatives which are directly targeting uh, patients. Um, this uh, is something that you have heard uh, already about. Uh, Ellen has been uh, tremendously helpful in this one and the creation of patients' information sheet. And uh, this is really you know, started from a very uh, basic need that we uh, have seen in the clinic. That was, you know, my personal experience when I moved to Glasgow, there was not a biliary cancer program. And what I thought was not nice is to give patients uh, uh, information material that said, you know, this is for colorectal cancer. So I think that we, we partnered with, uh, with AMMF to make sure that there is a biliary cancer dedicated information. And we did that on chemotherapy. And then um, Rafaela had the possibility through one of the short-term scientific mission to leverage that and make a translation in more than 30 languages, which is a great opportunity not only because to, to engage more countries, and these PIS are now distributed in all different countries around the world, but also you can give them to immigrants in your country. And I've had the experience, of, for example, to, to give one of these PIS to a patient speaking Mandarin and not a proper English. And you, I think that it was really nice and rewarding to see how that helped the integration of the patients in the clinic. The project is ongoing. I'm now getting confused with the buttons. The project is ongoing. Valentina from Humanitas uh, has uh, taken out the leadership of expanding uh, the uh, PIS creation to other regiments, like the CISGEM Durvalum and the targeted therapies. So, Ellen, we will get back to you to, to ask for more help and support into that. And we do hope that in the next two, three months, uh, this could be available. And now they can be found in the MMF website as well in the Eurocolangionet website. We do have some activities that want to increase awareness. That's something that we share with the MMF as an uh, ultimate goal. Um, but before going to that, yeah, something that I wanted to discuss is obviously um, uh, a different set of activities that are more focused on the service uh, that we can provide to our patients. So we have heard yesterday from Angela that she has uh, really put a great effort in try to give recommendation of what should be an idea an ideal multidisciplinary team meeting. And, um, and then this is now leveraged by Dr. Klumpen, who is here, and uh, is uh, um, you know, trying to work on ESCA Eurocon shared uh, MDT for those difficult cases where we can potentially interact together. And this is something we're going to discuss in Rome and that potentially we, um, uh, we, 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 we can take forward. Um, you might remember from the previous slide, Rafaela Casolina has now moved to WHO, and uh, she's very interested to bring cholangiocarcinoma there. And so we do, uh, we are now looking at, uh, you know, opportunities for um, streamlined service pathway for cholangiocarcinoma around the world and how WHO and ESCA can collaborate on this together. 
So um, again, uh, awareness is something that we share uh, in terms of uh, our ultimate goal. And uh, uh, thanks to Rui Castro with the help of Dilette and Francisco, we have created some information material that can be spread, you know, to just the lay public, uh, some infographic as well, some video. They are available on the uh, Eurocolangio Net booth here at the MMF website. So please go uh, there and just try to, and, uh, you know, have a, a visualization and uh, uh, give us our feedback. And we do um, have in plan a big dissemination program uh, which will be held in Rome in June at the Vatican. And uh, um, this is uh, the occasion where, you know, it will be paired with the dissemination uh, event. This is uh, uh, the next monothematic conference, which is supported by ENSCA and Eurocolangionet, and is led by Shahid, uh, along with uh, Guido, Jesus, and Vincenzo. And it will be um, on diagnosis and classification of cholangiocarcinoma, and there will be a lot of interaction with governance, so FDA, MA, and WHO will be there. So we do really invite everyone to participate. Uh, both early career investigator or senior. And I just want to leave you with this one last slide, uh, which really formalizes the working group that we are on at the moment. Um, you can see that it is a quite big variety of activities that we are performing. So if you are interested, just get in touch and we are able to, you know, just uh, um, put you in contact with the relevant uh, researchers and investigators. Thank you.